All right, so just by looking at the title, you must have realized that I am a bit late to this topic. I've used these in my previous videos without providing any solid explanation. So if you've watched those videos, you must already have some context on what I'm about to show you. So whenever we run a query, there are a few scenarios where you'd want to cancel the query mid execution or invalidate the existing query and trigger a refetch. We saw in the previous videos where after the mutation, we invalidated the query instead of relying on the auto refetch. That's because we know for a fact that there was an update on the backend and our cache data is now stale. So it made sense to invalidate the query. React query actually provides a lot more control over invalidating queries based on specific conditions. Like for instance, say you have a query to fetch the tasks and a query that fetches info related to a specific task using its ID. Now, both of these queries can be invalidated using the same query key. So if I use the invalidate queries method and instead it, I pass in tasks as the query key, each and every query that has tasks in it will be invalidated. If you want to specifically get rid of this second query, which has the ID in it, you can pass in the same structure as it is inside the invalidate queries and it's going to invalidate just that query. Similarly, if you want to invalidate only the tasks query, and no other queries that have tasks in them, but along with that, they have something extra. You can use the exact keyword. Passing in the exact keyword is only going to invalidate the query key with the exact combination. If you find yourself wanting even more control over this, then you can use a predicate function. This function will receive each query instance from the query cache and allow you to return true or false for whether you want to invalidate that query. This example that you see on the screen will invalidate all the individual task queries that have an ID less than five. The rest of the queries will still stick to the same cache. These filters that we just applied inside the invalidate function are called query filters. It's basically an object with certain conditions to match a query. So the query client has a lot of methods that you can consider as actions on your queries which you can use to update your cache. This along with query filters gives you a lot more control on how you'd want to go about making changes to your application. We've looked at invalidate queries, cancel queries, refetch queries, remove queries. But if you take a look at the query client instance, you'll see a lot of functions, each of them pretty self-explanatory to be honest. So you can take this up as an exercise. Now that you have watched these many videos and have a lot more context on how React query works, try to go through the methods on the query client instance and see if you understand all of them. If not, do leave a comment and I'd be happy to help. All right, so now coming back to these filters, there are filters for both queries and mutations. The query filter object looks something like this. We have the query key, which is what the filter will match on. We saw the exact property that returns the query that exactly matches the query key that we have passed. Then there's the type property. You can filter active or inactive queries, or you can pass all, which is the default option. Then there's tail, which is a Boolean property. If true, it will match the stale queries, else it will match the fresh ones. Then there's the fetch status. You can filter your queries based on whether they are in the pending state or the idle state or whether they are paused. Finally, we have the predicate function that we saw earlier, which acts as the final filter. So if no other filters are specified, this function will be evaluated against every query in the cache. Mutation filter has a similar set of properties as you can see on the screen. They work in the same way. Just in this context, it's to filter out mutations and not queries. And that was a brief overview of query client functions and filters. This video is pretty much the final part of this series. I'm still going through some advanced use cases that maybe I can include in this playlist. But these 12 videos should be a great baseline for anyone thinking of using React query in their project. Dominic, who is one of the core maintainers, has documented everything pretty well. And he has a blog post wherein he writes about good practices slash patterns and upcoming changes for the library. Do follow him on all of his socials and check out his blog. I have linked all of it in the description. If you like this type of content, do subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.